Is it obligatory to follow the woman's culture slash customs regarding mahar if the man insists on paying it in a certain way due to his own culture? Th this is really one of those things where this lecture comes in. It's negotiation, right? Neither of the two cultures is going to necessarily have the upper hand or should be followed. And quite frankly, from what I've seen, some cultures actually have demands that are at times impossible to fulfill. I think sometimes in cultural manifestations of Islam, while they are not bad or harmful, they can sometimes not be pragmatic and practical. And so it's very important when negotiating th these things to say, I understand that by stipulating this, you are valuing your daughter, and I want to be respectful of that, but I also want to be practical and be able to provide. So can we come to a median? What you'll find sometimes is if there are certain cultural things that they do kind of for show at the wedding, those will be done, and then the kind of real mahar behind the doors will be whatever is practical and pragmatic. Like I've been to a couple of weddings uh, of people from Libya, and apparently in certain parts of Libya, it's expected that when the mahar is asked, the man gives the woman a plate full of dates. Is that the only mahar that's given? No, but it's a symbolic thing, and there's no harm in doing that. But of course, the real mahar is written in the contract and is agreed upon on other times. That's where the negotiation comes in.